Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I'm joined today by my little buddy, Romeo, uh, and we're going to talk about Fusion 360. In fact, we're going to make a series of videos about Fusion 360. I've been using the software for oh, a few years now, and I'll be honest with you, I've probably learned to use it uh, a handful of different ways. Many of the things that I learned were wrong initially. I did not learn them the right way at first. And uh, so as I've progressed with the use of the software, as I've, as I've talked to people that are smarter than me, I've had to break bad habits and learn things the right way. So the video that I'm going to try to make, the series of videos, I'm going to try to make for you the uh, videos that I wish I would have seen uh, when I was learning to use the software. Now, it doesn't mean that there wasn't good tutorials out there when I was learning it. I just didn't pay attention to them. So... From a cam milling programming point of view, I'm going to try to break down uh, some of the things that I've learned and uh, try to pass on to you the best practices. So as an example, what we're going to do is we're going to work with this part, this little connecting rod. So this is a nice little part to demonstrate a lot of the functionality about the software. And we're not just going to throw the part in file and slap tool paths on it. We're, we're going to work with some vices. Uh, we're going to define stock. We're going to uh, move from one setup to another setup, and you, we're going to see the, the power of having the, uh, the stock that you cut in your first operation dynamically and automatically transfer over into subsequent operations. <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between uh, components and bodies in the software. So I'm going to try to just as we're as we're going through this exercise, pass on uh, little tidbits of knowledge and information. And uh, if you've used the software, you, you know, or or if you've learned any software like this, you know that sometimes it's intimidating. You don't know where to start, and uh, there, you know sometimes there is just no great place to start. Right? You just have to throw yourself into it and start using it. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, close this file and. We're going to start out. The first thing I'm going to do is save my CAM file. So I'm going to press uh, save. I'm going to call this CAM Rocker Arm. And I'll save it right here in this project. Uh, perfect. So the reason why I'm saving it is because I'm going to bring components and things in. And uh, it's best to give your file a name and save it first before you start bringing those components in. If you have an un, unnamed file, an untitled file, and try to insert uh, into current design, you're going to get this error. It says, please save the design before inserting the components, right? So that's why we save it first, then we can insert things into it. So very quickly, we'll talk about uh, components versus bodies. So Fusion 360, you can work with components, solid components, or uh, component. Like think of them as subassemblies, or you can work with just bodies, just like so dumb solid bodies. A lot of CAM software, if you've used different packages like MasterCAM or GibbsCAM or probably Bobcad, you know, most of your legacy uh, CAM packages kind of driven around the idea of working with solid bodies only. Uh, they don't really uh, handle the concept of assemblies and things like that. Fusion 360 is actually a full-blown solid modeling package. It deals with assemblies very well. And this integrated CAD CAM environment actually has a lot of advantages. And once you start doing CAM in an integrated CAD CAM environment, you'll never want to go back to like the old traditional um, CAM software ever again. So here's the thing. So this is a blank file. We just saved it. And there's one coordinate system in it. So just as an example, if we, uh, we'll just create a solid body really quick. I'm going to, actually here I can just do this. I'll create a box on this plane, drag it up, close. Okay, so we have a solid body right now. It shows up as a body under the bodies group. That that solid body is fixed in space. It is tied to this coordinate system. It will not move. I can't just click on it and drag it and pull it across the screen. If I want to move it, I actually have to use a move command, and uh, then I, I can move it and reposition it somewhere else. But 
I can't just grab it and click it and throw it somewhere. Uh, there's some benefits and disadvantages to this. Now, if I convert it to a component, so now it happened that that body just became a component. You can think of it as a subcomponent to the top level here. It has its own origin, which right now happens to be coincident with the origin of the root level. But you'll see if I grab it and start moving it, that component, its coordinate system, everything floats around on the screen. It's unconstrained. It's not assembled. Um, this is something that confuses people in the beginning. They start working with components, but they don't understand this idea of constraining them or assembling them. And as a, a CNC programmer, this can be really frustrating because you may have like a, something on your screen and you think it's in the right position. You don't think it's going to move. You start working with it and you just inadvertently move it just a tiny bit. And then you come back and your program isn't quite right. Things aren't good. This can be really frustrating. Uh, so you may wonder, well, why would I ever want to work with components? Why don't I just work with bodies and only bodies and avoid all this confusion? Uh, components, working with components actually brings a lot of uh, power into the software. It lets you do some things with the software that can't be done with uh, simple solid bodies. And it also, believe it or not, in the long run, makes your files more serviceable. It's, it becomes easier to change things and move things around. Um, so for instance, this component that we have here has one, one body in it. If I activate this component, right? So I just activated it. Let's say I make a sketch on, on this face. Uh, oh, let's just draw a circle or something. There we go. So we made a sketch. What you'll see is this solid body, the sketch, this coordinate system, they are all tied together. They move with each other and they maintain relative position to one another. And that's really powerful. So if you could imagine if you have the part that you're machining, all the sketches, all the geometries, all maybe you have a, a half dozen different solid bodies all tied together under one component. You can assemble them into a vice, do all your machining. If you decide, hey, you know, I don't like this vice. I want to come up with a different fixture, some other kind of work holding. Uh, it's pretty easy. You can just simply reassemble your component. All of your geometry comes along for the ride. Your CNC program will regenerate, you know, very easily. Uh, and you can make these big, really deep, complex changes to your uh, cam setup. And you don't have to worry about things blowing up. Now, if you did all of this with solid bodies, you didn't use components, you wouldn't be able to maintain these relationships to, uh, within uh, to one another. You, you couldn't have a, a solid body, a couple of sketches, all these different things all tied together. So uh, working with solid bodies at first might seem simpler, but really uh, to get the most out of the software, you want to learn to use components. I know, Romeo, you're very, yes, I know, you're very excited about this. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So we, let's let's take a few steps back here. Let's get a, get rid of some things. Let's delete this and uh, let's get rid of this body. Do it. All right, good. We're back to a blank slate. Uh, so what are we going to do? How are we going to get started with this? The first thing that I like to do, I like to work through these things kind of the same way that I would go about it in the real world. Um, so typically I'm thinking about fixturing or work holding first. And I think that's a good way uh, to work through your CAM file. So we might think of, you know, what vice am I going to hold this in? And then what size raw material do I need to make this out of? How big of a piece of stock do I need? And then you know, where inside of the stock am I going to position the part that I'm trying to make? How much do I want to leave on top for facing and for profiling and all those things? So let's start the same way. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a curt vise. So I'm going to insert this little four inch curt vise. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say insert into current design. And there we go. It just drops it in. I'm going to say, okay. This is a vise. It's not assembled. It can float around anywhere. 
And it's also linked. It has this little icon here. It's linked. So what that means is this, this component is really uh, tied to this component here that is in my uh, project folder, right? So when you're working with linked bodies, what that means, I, I could have this one vice and I could have it in 10 different CAM files. Um, if I change this original file, it would update in these 10 different CAM files. I'll, you know, when I would open that file up next time, I would see it would tell me I need to regenerate. Uh, depending on how you're working, that could be an advantage. I prefer to not work like that in most cases. Typically what I do, as soon as I bring the vice or something like that in, I break the link. I right click on it and I say break link. Now what that does is it places, and this is kind of the neat thing about Fusion 360, it places a complete self-contained copy of that component inside of this file. It's not linked to any other file, but it has all the data and all the information inside of it that you need to uh, work with that assembly or that component. So we got it in here. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to assemble it. We need to constrain it. Um, otherwise, this thing's just going to move around all over the place. So what I, what I want to do, uh, first, you know, I can kind of see the red line is my X, the green is my Y, Z, blue is my Z. Um, I just, I want to kind of get things sort of aligned a little bit to that coordinate system. So what I am going to do uh, before I constrain, well, actually, I'm going to do it all in one step. So this is kind of a neat thing about Fusion. I'm going to use an assembly tool to kind of do all this in one step. So come up here to assemble. I'm going to do something called a joint. And these joints, you can read about this online. They, they kind of represent physical motions, kind of, uh, kind of a unique way of doing it. Rigid is like welding something together. Revolute, uh, component rotates around joints. I'm not going to go into this in great detail. I'm hoping that you may understand a little bit about this if you don't. Uh, you can read up online, but basically these different joint types represent physical motion. So it's neat. As you're assembling your file, you're actually setting up for a uh, dynamic analysis. You're not, you're not just sticking things together. You're, you're simulating like actual physical connections, mechanical connections. I'm going to use the simplest one, rigid, which I think of as like welding two things together. Um, so, I need some kind of relationship. So what I'm going to do, I am going to use, remember we said if every component has an origin of its own, I'm going to use those to assemble this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the origin of my vice, and I'm going to assemble it to the origin of my cam file. And while I'm doing that, I can rotate it. So I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. I can do that by hand, or I, I can type it in over here. And um, now maybe I'm content to have those two origins on top of each other. Um, that's okay if you want to do that. But I'm, I'm just going to slide my vice over a little bit, just because I, I can. Um, when we get into doing our CNC program, we can set our WCS to anything. So there's not necessarily a benefit in positioning everything relative to this one coordinate system. And that might be something different if you're used to working with other CAM packages. But um, this package, you know, it gives you that flexibility. So great. There we, we have our first vice and it's in position. And I will say OK. And uh, there we go. It no longer well, I can click on it, I can try to move it. It's not going to just fly all over the screen. It's kind of fixed in position. All right, so I'm going to try to keep these videos around 15 minutes. We're coming up on 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to kick off another video where we will continue to work.